on this episode of Street Rag Garage, trying to decide whether to take the 1974 Impala to Hot Rod Power Tour. It's really rusty underneath. So I drove the Apollo back from Street Rat Garage here to the house in Indy, which is about an hour's drive. I uh, got it up here on the jack stands and I'm having a look under it and it's not looking so good. There is a, there's, there's some rust under here and it's not pretty. Okay, let me bring you under here and we can have a look. We'll just start. This is uh, the backing you know, of the bumper, the underneath of the bumper, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty rusty all through here. Here's the here's the mounting bracket. The everything on this side is rusted out. The bolt's not in here, and there's one bolt holding the driver's side bumper on on this side. The the passenger side looks like it has one bolt, two bolts maybe. Nope, it just has one bolt. There's no bolts on this side, so two bolts hold the whole bumper on, which really doesn't matter. If we push up on this, you can see that the bottom of the rear frame rail is completely gone, exposing the expansion shock and uh yeah it's not being held on by this side only by this little piece of metal right here so i mean probably it would make it anyway the trunk brace right here it's gone here it's gone here and it's all rusty in the middle uh the shock mount on the other side a little bit better but not really hey the gas tank well here's here's one strap that goes in the wrong direction but fortunately it does have um, maybe some coat hanger holding this side up this side strapped in as it should be this not so much on the gas tank there appears to be a big piece of JB weld right here Oh man, quarter panels, not worried about that. Spring shackles, they seem to be solid. The bushings are not good, but they're not awful. Oh, uh, it has air shocks on it that no longer work. This side, I'm not really worried about. But when we come over here to this side, if you can even see it, let me get the camera up in there, maybe. Uh, that's the top of the shock mount right there. That's not where it should be. So, big hole missing the shock mount. Oh, the rest of it, yeah, there's just rust. It's not as bad, but it's not as good as uh, two decent Flowmasters. That's about all I can say about that. If we come up here to the front of the car, we'll inspect the front frame rails, uh, the front cradle. It uh, wasn't feeling real good on the interstate. It wasn't awful, but uh, there seems to be some flex in there. So let's have a look and see what's going on there. Okay. It's hard to see, but that is one frame bushing right there so the back frame bushing is you know completely gone on the bottom side plus 
the rear of the frame is not good so even if we put a bushing in there there's nothing for it to hold to unless we plate that <sighs> yep. and here's the mid frame bushing which there's nothing on the bottom I don't think this was a good idea to drive this down the interstate it was just looking to uh, come out from underneath of there yeah some frame bushings will take care of that little issue maybe we can make it I don't know well let's have a look at the junk in the trunk now that shock mount I was talking about earlier that would have went right about here so that's that's Bluetooth this is the other side it's not great but uh at least it still has a plate in there there's a hole there there's a crack there the rest of it's not so bad if i can just get that taken care of that would be great i'm just worried about this back bumper <laughs> I may leave that on power tour. It is a rusty mess under there. I think I can patch it back together and make it. I mean, the car ran okay on the way up here. It was a one hour trip. I did have two incidents. I filled it up, came around the corner, car shut off. It would start up. As soon as I let go of the key, it quit. So uh, I think that's the ignition switch. So I just bypass the battery. I'll show you what I did here. I just ran this blue line straight to the coil, positive side, straight to the positive. And uh, yeah, started up and ran. I made it about another 20 miles. Then it started sputtering and shut down again. Uh, wasn't, it was getting fuel and no spark. Uh, I tested the points. It was getting just a little bit of spark, very weak. So I determined, hey, it's probably coil. Walked two miles. To O'Reilly's got a new coil tossed it in there real quick not real quick took about two hours to walk down there and back yeah about an hour and a half to walk down there and back but uh, yeah got fired up and drove it about an hour back and it did fine so engine wise everything's pretty good maybe I ordered a new carburetor I don't like Edelbrock so that's gonna go uh, besides that, it ran pretty good. So, uh, I guess the next step is, is to hit it with a power washer and get some of this dirt off. It is, it is nasty. It's dirty all over the place. Uh, maybe blow out the trunk. Hopefully we won't put any more rust holes in it. So, yeah. Maybe we can get that. Oh, the tires. You got these big tires on here. They're 10 inch. They're not going to fit. This is what I wanted to run on the car, but uh, not so much. guess we'll have to stick with the, the old school stars and hope those tires are good. Well, that looks a little bit better so I guess we probably ought to stop goofing around and get to the hard stuff and start pulling out the interior and <sighs> seeing if we can patch this up go get some uh, frame mounts as well kind of need to hold it together so it's another day I spent a lot of time tracking down the issue with the distributor, not distributor, but the ignition. It cut out, stopped on me, and I had to hot wire it 12 volts straight to the coil. And then the coil went out, then I had to replace that. So um, here's what I believe happened. So the first thing I did was I pulled the ignition switch here 
and test it on it. Uh, getting power, <clears throat> getting power in, getting power out. So everything looks good here. Um, you know, if these things go out, you're you could not get power to you know the distributor uh, to the coil and then to the distributor. That was fine. I went out here and started tracking down the wire right here that feeds the the coil. So I wound up unwrapping the wire loom here and we see that this red wire here uh, there's a junction here this is looks like a factory solder job uh, some of the some of the sheathing has come off of it but everything looks good here this is probably the only fabric wrap wire in the entire car this is a resistor wire so I got to pull in on it a little bit and yeah it came uh, it came off it was broke right here and right here I already put in a jumper wire just to see if that was the issue of course it was but to see if there was any more issues I mean, this is really super brittle, probably, because it's right here in between the, it's in over top of the transmission, the rear of the engine, uh, the exhaust pipes, everything. Got a lot of heat, got real brittle, and uh, just sort of came apart. So I had to trim back a couple of inches. You can see right there, it's going to have to be trimmed back a little bit more. But, um, you know, my only problem is this is a resistor wire, so uh, I believe there's only supposed to be, I read somewhere, 8 volts going to the coil, so it doesn't get too much. I'll have to double check that, see if that's right. If so, we're just going to have to cut this back a little bit more and then put in, you know, our jumper wire, or a jumper wire, and that should still have only eight volts coming out we come out we go through this wire go through the re from the resistor wire to a regular wire back to the resistor wire that should still only come out to you know eight volts but uh yeah that's a that's the issue i tied this in she fired right up and ran with no problems so sometimes you have to dig through these wiring looms and uh and find the problem start at one end and go to the other and just like that it's done just a couple of bug connectors uh electrical tape to keep any moisture out because i didn't solder them or use shrink wrap because this is just a temporary deal it'd be nice uh, if i could pull out all this wiring and put some good stuff in i'm sure there's other wiring issues probably in here somewhere uh it's almost 50 years old so yep I'm going to stick this back in the loom, and that part will be done. On to the next thing. Well, everything is complete under there as far as wiring goes. Let's uh, give it a crank up and see if she fires now. Just got done yanking the seats out of the Apollo and uh, pulling up the carpet and the vinyl stuff that was on top of the carpet and the underlayment, the sound dampening. It's not good. There, there, there's holes and a lot of them. Have a look here and see what we have to do to get this thing patched up. 
So, we got a whole, see we got this right here, which isn't even connected to the inner rockers. That seems to be a theme that goes all the way back. All the way back to here, that's cracked. There, there's a hole there. All the way back there. Pretty much the same thing on the other side. This is a unibody car. This is exactly what you don't want. I mean, it's it's not good. So, um, you're gonna have to find a way to get all that tapped back together. Because it is not looking good. See it all a little bit better from here, but I've seen worse, but I have definitely seen so much better. Midwest car. More things. I took uh, the brake drum off, and uh, there is zero pad on the shoes and the, uh, the wheel cylinder seems to be popped out there a little bit. Uh, yeah, I just ordered some uh, brake parts for that, so something else we got to do. And the list just keeps growing. There's some more of that rust that you can see from the inside, and there's, oh yeah, the shock mounts broke here. You can see it. It was welded here, and that's supposed to go up here. Yeah. And look, the shock is completely collapsed, and that's no good. There's a, there's a lot of stuff to do. Better get busy. Just got a delivery at the door here. It is from Holly. All right, looks like we got a, uh, can't remember, I think this was a remanufactured. It's hard to tell. It looks brand new, but uh, no, I ordered a yeah, I ordered a remanufactured 600 CFM poly carburetor. So uh, I mean, it's it's like it's like brand new. I guess this is probably a return that somebody somebody didn't want or didn't know how to set up properly. But it's about a hundred dollars cheaper than a, a brand new one, and it's from Holly. So whatever it was or wasn't wrong with it was fixed just like new can't beat that get this put on get rid of that edelbrock this is going to be my new floor pan this is what's left of my 2003 chevy express van that i pulled the uh, 6.0 and the 4l ade out of for a ls swap managed to uh just go ahead and cut up the rest of the van and save a few of these big pieces you never know when you're gonna need them for something just like this so i cut a piece out of the van panel to fit right here into this nice gaping hole so uh the right thing would be to cut some of that rust out so you don't get moisture back up trapped in between the panels and uh get even more rust than you have before but uh we only have like 10 days left so we're just going to take this dead blow and persuade the panel into formation and maybe throw some sheet metal screws in there and we're going to call that good for right now and just like that one makeshift van floor pan it's um yeah it's in there it's not bad really for you know a hammer some old sheet metal and screws but like i said this all this all needs to be ripped out and a full frame or something put in underneath this car but this uh this will do it it looks uh fair okay on this panel i'm gonna need a lip i don't need this flat i need it to be a 90 degree yeah, 90 degree down. Up. I gotta flip that over because I want the yellow side up. 
So I don't have a brake or any fancy tools, but I do have a hammer and I do have this edge right here of my garage. So uh, yeah, that's too much of a lift. Now we have a lip. Problem solved. I think we're all done here. Some of my finest, best, worst work. Uh, there's still a few little holes here and there that uh, we're going to fill in another special manner. But beat this pan into place. Had to stick a little small one there. Big one there. Big one there. Big one there. So yeah. I don't feel bad about doing this because this whole car is just completely rotted underneath and uh, in order to make this right you have to cut everything out from underneath here um, yeah I'm not gonna make it much worse you can only make it better so hopefully it'll stay screwed together for a little while long enough to make the power tour and that's all I'm worried about um, it's a uh, it's the end of the day, so we're going to call it quits there. We'll get back onto this. Still got to get these parts done. Shoes just came in. Oh, what else do we have to do? I don't know. Everything. Still have everything to do. Have a week to do it in. So, get back on it. I got to help my brother move. Tomorrow, we'll get back on it eventually, I guess. In the mornings and in the evenings when the sun goes down, I go ahead and take uh, the buffer to it. It had quite a, quite a bit of scratches and some oxidation. Um, you know, it is true. They, what they say, you, you can polish a turd. And this, uh, this turd is polished really nicely. Nice on the outside, total garbage on the underside. Matter, as a matter of, of fact, as a matter of a fact, <laughs> let's look at just some of the stuff that came out while I was beating the floor pans in the submission. All of that is weight reduction. All on this side. All of this on this side. I mean, that's thick. There's a, there's a penny. Uh, actually, I found, uh, I think, a dollar... 85 underneath the seats so uh, that paid for the sheet metal screws that I put into it but yeah so that's uh I think that's gonna wrap it up for this episode uh, I don't want it to get too long I'll get back on this we'll cover the brakes and uh, gotta change the ignition locks what else do I have to do um, install the carburetor fuel lines few other things and that'll be in the next video so that'll do it for this episode of street wreck garage until next time